going quite some time back. Some of you may remember that on April Fools, I released a video covering Bart's lore. But there I turned it into a joke, where I literally just sat quietly there for about 10 minutes. Because at that time, Bart had like 3 lines of lore. But now, we don't need these jokes anymore. Because as Riot started cleaning up the lore of all the Targonian champions, perhaps in preparation to Targon becoming a deck in Legends of Runeterra, Bard got some proper lore as well. So finally, his story is not just speculations based on what happened in his animated teaser. Now we actually know what Bard is doing in the universe of League of Legends. So without further ado, let's have a look at the new lore of Bard. As far as we know, Runeterra has two main realms. The physical realm and its mirrored magical version, the spirit realm. Connected to the spirit realm, there are also sub realms like the shadow realm, or one could argue even Bandle City. But outside of these two main planes of existence, there is also the celestial realm, and this is where all the godlike beings come from. Bard's lore explains that it is said that most inhabitants of the Celestial Realm see their home as a wondrous and vivid tapestry, woven with prismatic threads of pure starlight. However, within this realm, there is one entity that doesn't see the beauty of this dimension, but they can hear it. And of course, this enigmatic eternal entity is Bard, who senses the Celestial Realm as a symphony of pleasing mystic music. In the very beginning, Bard had drifted without purpose or perspective through a silent cosmos, but with a deep sense of anticipation that something miraculous would eventually come to fill it. Fate did not disappoint him, and with the forging of the first stars, which is an event likely linked to Aurelian's soul, since he holds the title the Starforger, the silence was broken and the first notes of creation rang in Bard's ear. As he traveled through the swirling harmonies between the stars, on his way, he met the tiniest wisps of residual inspiration, which were left over from the birth of these symphonies. These semitonal incomplete modes of energy, or MEEPs as we know them, were drawn to him wherever he added his own voice into the cosmos, forever ringing in one perfect harmony. This wasn't his masterpiece. Bart didn't make the stars or the cosmic sounds of the galaxy, Yet he gloried in it all the same. But after some time, which in a primordial cosmos could be years or eons, a noise appeared. It was so small at first Bard might have missed it, but the Meeps who all greatly adored Bard drew his attention to a failed dynamic shift here, an unexpected syncopation there, and they even pointed out to him the growing absence of sound where before sound had been. Bard searched the celestial realm for clues as to what was happening, until he discovered the source. It was the most curious of things, a world with a song all of its own. Driven by unknown magic, the music produced by Runeterra was primitive, unevolved and chaotic just like the mortal beings that lived there. And yet it had an inherent beauty, like the rolling thunder of a storm, or the melodious knocking of wooden chimes in the wind which come before that. Bard would have merely appreciated it for what it was, but unfortunately, this particular song had gone far beyond a mere counterpoint to what the Celestials were doing. The Celestials built the cosmos, and yet this song was becoming destructive, so something had to be done. When Bard arrived on Runeterra, he first landed in the first lands of Ionia. There, Bard and his attendant Meeps crossed into the material realm. And suddenly, all at once, his ears became like eyes. To move around the physical realm, he made himself a simple body from the trinkets and fabrics of a traveling musician's wagon. This included a charming circular mask with three holes in its face. Then, for many years, he walked around the world, confusing and delighting all the creatures he met along the way. And after a while, he realized that things on this world were far more complex than what he had imagined. Somehow, by a mistake, many objects of wild and unpredictable power seem to have made their way into Runeterra, and they were disrupting the natural cosmic order of all things. The story is very vague about these powerful magical objects, but we can assume it is talking about the world runes, which, just like the story said, by some unexplained mistake, the world runes were scattered across the very world which they have created. Anyway, Looking back up to the heavens, Bart deduced that some other power within the celestial realm was at work here, though to what end he could not guess. 
Regardless, he has taken to the role of caretaker, retrieving anything out of place and returning it to where it can do no further harm. Though this may be only the first step to bringing the universe back in tune, it may also be the only way this world can be saved from what lies beyond it. And Bard is not blind to the future. He can see a great conflict approaching, one fought not in any single realm, but in all, and awaits the time he must finally pick a side. And that was the new story of Bard. It wasn't the longest, but to be honest, he revealed quite a lot of new things. So let's get through them. First of all, the story mentioned that when Bard arrived on Runeterra, it was already populated and fully working, which means that Bard wasn't there when Runeterra was created. All we know is that Runeterra was created with the power of the world runes and that it was highly likely created by the celestial beings. However, Bard wasn't one of them. Next we learned that Bard noticed how the world runes are throwing Runeterra off balance. And so he decided to help humans and the entire planet by removing objects that are not supposed to be on Runeterra. And this heavily ties into Bard's animated cinematic. I do believe that because once again, Riot is slowly making all of their cinematics canon. And so Bard is no exception. Bard's cinematic is happening during the Noxian invasion of Ionia. There, Noxians fought their way up Bard Mountain. We never learned why Noxians were there, but we can safely assume they were chasing a powerful artifact. In the cinematic, we can see one of the native Ionians trying to hide this artifact from the Noxians, but they end up having to use it in self-defense. And there the cinematic revealed that it is so powerful, it could literally level entire landscapes. Of course, since humans released the power of this artifact, Bard was able to hear its song, which helped him quickly find it, and he carried it to the peak of Bard Mountain. There, with his harmonious celestial magic, he transported it away from Runeterra. Because remember, as was explained in his bio, Bard's job is to take items that don't belong on Runeterra away from the world. Which means that yes, this powerful artifact had celestial origins. But it also means something cooler. I assume people call the mountain Bard Mountain because that's where you can often find Bard. Remember, his bio mentioned that on his journeys he often ran into mortal beings. But more importantly, it wouldn't make sense for a celestial artifact to be stored on Bard Mountain. Because if it was there from the beginning, Bard would have known about it and he would have immediately taken it away. So here's what's likely happening in the cinematic. The local Ionians probably knew about Bard and what he was doing with all the celestial things. And so when the Noxian invasion began, to make sure this artifact wouldn't become a powerful weapon in the hands of the Noxians, the local Ionians decided to take the artifact and travel to Bard Mountain, where Bard could take it away from them. So the Noxians didn't go to the mountain because they thought there was an artifact. It seems like they were chasing the Ionians who were running away with it. In other words, the Ionians most likely decided that if they wouldn't have the artifact, it would be safer if nobody would. And so, on the peak of Bard Mountain, they can give the artifact back to the Celestials. That's why in the cinematic the old man is ascending the mountain with the artifact. If it was the other way around, and if the artifact came from the mountain, it would have been stored at its peak from the beginning. What is awesome about this entire cinematic is that it is so old that back then Riot probably had totally different plans with it. But as the lore evolved, they were able to give it a brand new meaning. And this brings us to the final part of this video, the new major reveal. The story has two sentences which people quickly go over, but which are incredibly important. These two sentences say, Casting his gaze back to the heavens, Bard deduced that some other power within the celestial realm was at work here, though to what end he could not guess. This means that the world runes were thrown back to Runeterra by a new mysterious villain that comes from the celestial realm. So we are likely not talking about the Watchers, who are outside all of the realities that we know of. No, this means that we have a new evil celestial on our hands. Almost like a dark star but canon. At first I thought that this might have been the work of the Aspect of Twilight, because that's the entity which usually plays tricks on the other Celestials. And since Riot recently updated Zoe's bio, that was my first suspicion. But unfortunately, although her new bio made Zoe a bit cooler, especially after learning the fact that Zoe now roams around Demacia, still there was no mention of the Twilight's motivation for anything. 
All we learned was that the aspect of Twilight likes people with a lot of joy. Which Zoe certainly does have. So going back to what Bart mentioned, this still means that the scattering of the world runes was a celestial inside job. But although it came from within the celestial realm, it feels like it wasn't one of the aspects that we know. Which to me sounds like a good old teaser for a future champion. Maybe Wright wants to give us something similar to Dark Stars, but in the canon universe. Perhaps that's why Bart mentioned that he might have to pick a side. Although that's probably just going to be either help humans and fix Runeterra, or work with the Celestials and wipe it clean. But somehow it should be still linked to more aspects. After all, it's been a while since we have learned something new about them. And who knows, even though Wright already considered it, maybe they decided to not turn Set into the aspect of Might because they already had a plan for something else regarding the aspects.